the shit. Cat Williams came out and set the fucking industry, like the whole internet on fire. You did a video five years prior to that nigga saying basically the same shit he was saying, but in a nice way. What video? Why I Left Hollywood. Okay, that was a big one. Yeah. That was a big one. Yeah. But you were a comedian mm -hmm. and still a comedian, okay? Artist all the way, songwriter, uh, spoken word artist, all the above. You've been doing this for a long time on the internet. Like, you were the first... Basically, I wouldn't even have this chair if it wasn't for you. Yeah. Like, when I tell you, what was your video? It was I mean, like. I appreciate it, though. No, I'm serious, I'm, Spoken. I'm serious. I appreciate it. No, don't don't appreciate it. You, <laughs> I'm just saying, I appreciate it. No, just it. look, just <laughs> say, I know. Nah. Just tell these niggas, I know. Well, you know, if I say that. No, no, it is what you it know, is. You know, I don't have no problem with saying that. I know that. Well, I, look, I, I, see, that's that thing. Like, I don't grew. I don't grew, man. Like I, I don't grew, really... but the, the facts are the facts. You've been doing this shit twenty plus years. You was the first African American comedian, <laughs> spoken word artist to take this shit to the internet, and not only take it to the internet, but take it to Hollywood. And then, by choice, you left Hollywood. Yeah. Came back, put everybody on game mm -hmm. on what's out there, mm -hmm. and not every. I'm seeing YouTube, but I remember when you used to make the uh, the parody music videos. Yeah. Everybody started making the parody music videos. Yeah. <laughs> you were doing motivational. Well, well hold on, parody. Oh, okay, but but parody was was already out prior to me. There was a whole another generation before me, but um, it's only maybe like maybe one or two that made it out. In my generation, it, that was like the the golden era. Of we were YouTube. only watching you. 50 million, 60 million views yeah. on parodies. There wasn't an artist you didn't rewrite and make it comedic. And send, sometimes your fucking parodies will be bigger than the songs that the artist wrote. You knew that, right? Yeah. I be doing a lot of stuff. I just be chilling. And it's amazing. I, I had a phase. I had a phase where it was more so like um, in the beginning... In the beginning, I took I took my field more so like sports because I grew up watching sports and mm. I played sports, like played baseball, football, basketball. I played all that before high school. So by the time I got to high school, I wanted to kind of ice out and figure out what time what kind of person I wanted to be. Then I went to college. I used college as an excuse, and the next thing you know, I got into what I got into, and I just wanted to figure out my way out. So when I got into the actual internet game, it was more so like a it wasn't it wasn't personal, but it was more so like I'm coming for your head, and that's I think people felt the steam, but they didn't really know what I was really doing. We felt it. We all felt it. Faith, consistency, and hard, hard work. work. Yeah. Winos, welcome spoken reasons to What's the motherfucking wise seller. That, was, that was your that intro. That was it. That was my intro. Buddy? All right. Yeah. Now, I was what, serious. Now, what is this? What is this? What this, is this is a white wine. This is Sauvignon Blanc, okay? Actually okay. grown. It's 20% lighter in calories. I like Sauvignon okay, okay. Blanc. Okay. Rich white women taught me about this wine because it's, I was like, how are they drinking so much it's wine? It's a little dry. It's a little dry. Yeah, but, but you but got can, water. You got I, three bottles of water. Oh, no, I, I, can, I can take you it. You got it? I can take it. You know, I'm like, how do white women drinking all this wine and they're not gaining no weight? And it's because it's so light in calories. So, cheers. I'm so excited. I'm honored to do appreciate this. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? Because... <laughs> There's a lot, like I said, I wouldn't be here a lot. I mean, just a lot of us would not be here doing what we're doing. If it wasn't for big motherfucking spoke. You know, the crazy part is I've never actually been on any type of platform where I heard it this type of way. Like, I've heard it in the mall. Because they haters. I mean, you know. They haters. I, I, I'm going through it right now. They're fucking haters. Well, well, don't haters love you on the low? They do. That's what I'm saying. But here's the thing. How do we encourage others to be inspired by art if we're not respecting art? It's not about respecting the artist. It's about respecting art. Yeah. You are an artist that has created some dominant fucking art that shocked the internet. Yeah. You went through so much with YouTube and being on social media as a whole. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Them sometimes not monetizing your videos. I mean, we still going through it now, but letting white creators get all this money. You yeah. the only black creator getting more views than white creators. Yeah. 
Like you went through it. You took your show from YouTube into the comedy clubs. Yeah. I know your business. <laughs> what? I know your motherfucking business. Not, not your personal life. No, no, oh, no, no, no. Oh. I don't care about all that. I care about the art. All right. I don't care about all that. Listen, <laughs> any side bitch or whoever is fucking on spoke, so, so, <laughs> get somebody else to do it. Wisdom. Okay. You're a legend. Mm -hmm. And you're only 35. Only. You just yeah. getting to, you haven't even started into your second phase yet. Nah. Well, I, I think I'm walking into my 2.0. I'm about to. If I'm not, I'm, I'm at the tail end of my last, my, my, my 1.0. Like, I call it 1.0, 2.0. Yeah. Because, you know, through our 20s, we have yeah. a phase where yeah. we're trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. You accomplish what a lot of folks, what people in lifetimes work to get to. Yeah. And then said, fuck you and walked away. Yeah. And now you're 35 and I'm like, he, he gearing up for his second phase because... I got back into media and radio after walking away for a little while mm -hmm. at 35, mm -hmm. and it was hard. It mm -hmm. was not easy. I remember you used to be counseling me when the motherfuckers was coming for me, like mm -hmm. hard. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And here I am about to be 42, 2.0. Yeah. It take a while for you to get there because, um, like, I started, like, people don't, like, I edit. Yes. I edit my own videos. I do pretty much everything. Like I know about all the camera equipment. Preach. I, I got I got yes. drones. Yes. All types of things. I got microphones. I know how to work it all. But it took a while. I never went. I I originally wanted to go to Full Cell. You know what Full Cell is? Mm -hmm. Yeah, my uh, yeah. lead of video production. He he graduated from Full Cell. Yeah, my mother. My mother. Want, she took me there, and you know it cost too much to go. So that's how everything pretty much started. Um, um, like I said, when I first went to college i didn't go to college to um to be an artist i went there because i didn't know what i wanted to be so i went there for criminal justice yeah i went there to be a, a correctional officer no fucking way yeah because my mama club because my mama always told me she said look nobody got degrees you know how i go nobody yeah. got degrees around here we need you to get yours i'm like i don't really need no degree to be no you know what it what it is, but so first generation yeah, graduate. But I've had like nineteen, twenty jobs before I actually pretty much went to college. What kind of jobs you had? Starting off with cutting grass. Okay. I was working at Winn Dixie. <laughs> I was working at the car wash. I was working at Sears. I was working at Ross. I was I was doing all types of things. Like I was working at Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> what age did I you start? I working at Chevron <laughs> gas station. I said that before. Was you pumping gas? I, 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 I did everything except cashier and food. I worked at the, um, I was a cooler boy, you know, the person where you go get your, your juice. Yeah. The people that talk junk behind. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was mean. I used to, want to, used to pull that junk back. Yeah, and talk shit before you even shut the freezer. <laughs> the freezer though. I was one of them. Yeah. Where yeah. else you work? Uh, man, I worked at uh, Prime America. No way. I worked at Prime America. Yeah. What was you doing for Prime America? I worked America? at FedEx. Okay. I worked at... Uh, now, FedEx had some good benefits. But that was... Oh I, oh, I worked at the Center for Drug Free Living. That was one of my last jobs I worked at. Okay. I, don't, I probably named like probably 12 or 13. So, that was a of. rehab. Did you work the night shift? Uh, I did all. I, I worked from... I, I did 2 to 10. It was 2 to 10. 10 to 6 and and 6 to 2. Now, you ain't had them, them, them girls try to fuck on you. No, nah, I, I didn't work around the girls. <laughs> I worked around boys. No, I, I, they don't try me. But I, well, people don't know this, too. I start well, my real fans really know what's up, but I started off around kids. Oh. I started off like I doing, guess I ain't no real fan because I didn't know that. Well, you know, I'm just saying like, you know, I don't expect for everybody to know me. Yeah. Because to me, I still see myself like I'm new. Like I walk outside and people be like, "Man, that's you, man, you, you." I like I know it's me, but I don't expect for everybody to know everything what I do. Like they, there might be some people that know me for Soldier Boy. There might be some people that know me for Sandra Bullock and all the other stuff. So mm -hmm. I gotta take it for what I take it as. At first, I used to get frustrated when I used to listen to like people like Fifty Cent and he'll, you know, all these major artists. They'll perform all the biggest hits, mm -hmm. and but then all the people in the crowd, majority of them don't know this all the other stuff that they did in the lab. So that's pretty much, you know, um, how it all came down to me. I, I, you know, I was just going around um, trying to just find myself and 
I, I started off as a volunteer at the 33rd Street Jail in Orlando, and then that transpired into me working with kids for like five to six years. And then, so at, at I, risk youth, pretty much. Yeah, I was already a poet and everything in between. I was like a poet, uh, you know, in between jobs, living off of uh, unemployment, going from my mama house to friends' couches and stuff like that. And then it just all transpired until like what it was. At what moment did you discover? Because I know you say you were doing poetry in between. When did you recognize that you were an actual like artist? At what age? I'd say about 19. 19? Yeah, 19. Was you bad as fuck in school? Nah. Really? I was more so quiet. But all right, my real friends know I'm not quiet. But they know I'm quiet, if that makes sense. Okay. Like, I'm quiet. Like, if you take me around other people, like, like me and you know each other, mm -hmm. and you take me around your other folks, I may not, I may not say nothing. Okay. I'm just a observant. That's just who I am. But I, I talk. I know how to hold a conversation. But I wasn't bad in school. I got into my fights. I got suspended. I done went through the whole nine. Okay, because I was gonna say you're from Florida now. Don't we try yeah, to I don't, I don't, up? I don't, I don't went through we all that. We fucking bad. Some no, I was, I wasn't a bad kid. Okay, I wasn't a bad kid. Everybody thought because I looked, I'm smart. But I was a smart kid who just was lazy in school. Okay, because you were. I, I think you know. You probably didn't know it at the time. You were an artist. Yeah. And you needed to be inspired. Yeah. To work. Otherwise, yeah. you're you know you get lazy, but. When did you start with poetry? Is that the, is that when you like when did you start to write poetry? That started when I was 18, 18 19. You started writing poetry. Did everything, you want to be a every, rapper or everything something? Everything was you, no, I never wanted to be a rapper. I didn't I didn't want to be everything what everybody else was. Well, you was good at it when you was doing your parodies and stuff. Look. Well, well coming from where I come from, you know, you either going to be a football a football player or you see everybody else trying to rap, be trying to make it out. And I knew for a fact, I'm like, bro, if I rap, they're going to think I'm Kanye West or something. And, you know what I mean? Mm. That ain't, so let me go somewhere where I can be accepted and around some people that's like-minded. Because I don't expect for people, and there's no shade to nobody that I grew up with or, th or nothing like that. It's just the fact that I don't expect for everybody to understand who I am in, 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 the, in the process of me trying to become who I, who I want to be or I need to be. Now, were you doing spoken word at like open mics and stuff like that when you started writing poetry, or was it just something you just kind of did and kept to yourself? I just woke up one day and said I want to do poetry. That's all it was, because I, I got tired of uh, switching jobs. <laughs> so you said, was poetry go pay the bill? I got, I got tired of switching jobs, so I just woke up one day. Well, 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 well what originally happened was this. Because I'm like, how was you making money? I was switching jobs. I wasn't making no money off it. I never made money off of poetry, ever. Okay. Even now to this day, I can. But even then, it's not, It's still not a thing. And that's part of some of the reason why I'm, I'm kind of here too. But uh, going back to what you say about, about what was the question again? Yeah, no, no, no. Like, damn, I forgot the damn question. Oh, how I started. Yes, how you started. Well, I just pulled up, I just pulled up one day and uh, it was a girl that shitted on me. She got tired of me wearing the same clothes and shoes. And uh, after I realized that she said that to me. She said, because I had a new job at Primerica. I said, I got a new job. She said, oh, congratulations, boo. Uh, maybe you could use some of that money and get you a new pair of, uh, you know, new pair of shoes. Yuck. Mm. And then I got, I went right back to the lab in my room and I ain't cry or nothing, but I just used it as, as, a, as a stepping stone. Damn, so she gut punched you right there. Yeah. But I wasn't hurt though. I was hurt, but I wasn't hurt. I knew I was young. How old was she? Man, I'm like 20, 19 years old. Mm. That don't matter. Was she older or was she your age? Uh, she was one year older than me. So okay. imagine me being 11th, 11th grade, she in 12th. Okay. And I'm in 12th and she move on and go to college and I and kind of play the waiting situation a little bit. Okay. So whenever you got angry or just kind of frustrated, you were just going write poetry? Whenever I got angry and what? Frustrated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You I just never, go write poetry. I never, I ain't, I ain't no arguing type person. That's kind of weird. It's like, and I get it. Now people just wake up one day and say, like, you know, sexy red. I want to be a rapper, and it's like, uh, that's not right. <laughs> that's nah, not nah, motherfucking nah, right. You got nah. a, you got a beat that we're gonna dance to anyway yeah. in a hook. Yeah. Okay. Um. But for you, it's like looking at how your create your art mm -hmm. came together with you knowing how to edit. 
Because people always ask me, like, how do you do all this? I'm like, I learned every aspect of my business yeah. and how to do it and did it yeah. before everybody else came on board to help. You yeah. understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Even even though my husband was in production years before I got into it. And so, like, when you put all the elements of your art together and, and to see you kind of take that to the Internet and bet on yourself. Yeah. After working, you saying all these damn jobs. It's like you had to be creative before you knew that you was creative. I was, I was, I used to, I used to record. I used to have a karaoke machine when I was twelve years old. When Tyler Perry uh, uh, came out with Madea and all that, and I used to make my own parodies uh, of cassettes and have my own cassettes of Ricky Smiley prank call tapes. See, that's there we go. See, I knew I, it was something. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah, come yeah. on now, you ain't just yeah. like wake up at nineteen. Do, nah, but I've always been weird. That's Everybody thought weird. I was weird, but but weird to me ain't ain't a bad thing. You know, people think weird is bad. No, it's just everybody weird. Everybody weird. I don't give a damn who you is. Everybody weird. So, looking back on that now, you do realize that you essentially <laughs> belong in the position that Ricky Smiley and them are in. Uh, yeah, I know I belong here. You see. People be wanting me to say what I really want to say, man. Like, I'm trying to get like, you the motherfucking say it. Like, say I know I belong here. I kept telling y'all a long time ago, I ain't shit yet. I'm he at, said I ain't shit yet. But now I, now I say I ain't shit because, you know, because I got tired of people saying I ain't shit. Well, I don't like saying I ain't shit because now people, they walk up to me and be like, hey, Spoke, what's up? You ain't shit. I'm like, God damn. <laughs> That shit gotta hurt my soul a little bit. Like they got it from you. Hold though. on, bro. I'm like, hold on. You know, I, I know where you get it from, but hold on, yeah, bro. Like, as yeah. you get older, you're like, well, I'm trying to get better. You said the words have power. Yeah, I know. So I don't really say it as much anymore. So you was already doing the spoofs, the prank calls, making it funny on the radio before they brought it. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot that comes. Writing with it. plays, maybe? No. I never wrote plays. Okay, but you did write a hell of a lot of fucking skits on I, YouTube. I wrote, I wrote short film. Short films. You know about the short film? No, I don't know about the short films. Short films, relationship games. Okay, yes, 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 yes. That's one what I'm talking about, four. like the skits. Relationship games one through. No, that's not a skit. That's a whole short film. That was around the time when when Issa Rae insecure her thing on YouTube was, was kind of buzzing. Yeah. We kind of came in around that same time, and I did relationship games one through four, and she was doing her. I think awkward black girl or something like mm. that. Yeah, okay. And then uh, I had I got other short film called Sex and Friendship. I'm telling you, these are real live. This ain't no, oh, this Tubi. No, this is for real deal. Like this is that. There's a there's so much about me that people don't understand. My short film is like a whole another saga about that put a, that made people not think about me when it comes to skit. When I started doing short films, it was like, oh my god, he can actually do this. Now you're gonna make me go back and, and watch all these short films. Yeah, right? that's me it. and my husband love short films. We're yeah. always on Vimeo watching yeah. short films and shit because they don't put them as much on YouTube as they used to. They're now on Vimeo. I, so, I don't want as far as shopping my my films to Asians and all that stuff. Like I think when people when they when they when they like why said, Asians? Why agents? You said oh, I thought you said Asians. Oh, I said agents. Oh, agents. agents. Okay, I was like, why Asians? Yeah. What the hell? No, 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 no. I shot my scripts to like agents in, in different okay. studios and stuff like that. But I think that people, I think that folks, they look at it and say, "Well, you only did one movie. How come I haven't seen you or nothing else?" And now that you look at it, you see Neil Long, you see everything coming out. Mm -hmm. And now people are starting to the the consumers are starting to get a better understanding of how it actually works. I don't expect for them to completely understand it. Hell, I don't even completely understand it. But at the same time, I think that it, it, it's just, um, you know, I, I would ask that the consumer just be a lot more patient when it comes to public figures. Because at the end of the day, you don't know what these people are going through. You know that. I do. You don't know, you know, you don't know what kind of financial situation they may be dealing with. And because we live in a microwave era right now, everything is so quick, so instant that we just we put so much pressure on our own black public figures. So much to the point that they don't even want to do this shit no more. A lot of them don't want to do this no more. A lot of them be, a lot of them would rather. I I tell you, I'd rather go be a construction worker, and 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 and, and live in my peace than to try to do this every day and try to satisfy people. But I think that's where we get it wrong. And for me, I'm kind of I'm, I'm very fortunate to know, and to have early on that I'm doing this for me, because mm -hmm. if I was doing it for other people. Or trying to satisfy them. I remember when I first came out, my had more dislikes 
that I had likes on my videos. <laughs> like, people be like, why do you do these videos? Because it's for me. I don't give a shit. Mm -hmm. And I got a reaction out of you. Mm -hmm. And so they're asking me, like, oh, she enjoys this. I don't enjoy people hating on me, but mm -hmm. I don't give a damn. Yeah. It's my art. Yeah. It's what makes me happy. Mm -hmm. And if I can't do this, I don't want to be here. Yeah, exactly. And I don't give a fuck what you say about it. So let, let's start. Because when you brought your art to YouTube in a year, you took off, you, you took off real fast. I started in 2008. Yes. My channel started in 2008. Well, yeah, I would say within two weeks, I blew up because I got fired in early February. And if you look at the track record, well, I think late January or early February. And within that time, I blew up and within like two weeks, I was already ready to go. What my was your first, first video? Uh, my first video was when I was picking at Baldwin Hills from back in the day. I was doing a reaction video. Okay. Just a reaction video. That's it. And then it went from something. I, I pretty much utilized all, all these different videos to, to do what I wanted. Because the channel was spoken reasons, but I had a plan behind it the whole time. And YouTube really wasn't that popular back then. It was popular, but it, it wasn't was. as popular as it is now. It was kind of like they had this saying in mainstream. Because, you know, I'm, I'm too busy trying to get hired at radio stations. They were always put you on the street team. Oh, you're going to go to the internet where the rejects go. So it was still kind yeah. of this taboo yeah. Yeah. where people who weren't accepted in, in normal society would go. So I guess that's where you say people always call me weird. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I've always been a YouTube baby anyway. Well, not baby, but... No, probably, you are. Well, I, I okay, when you say baby, like I probably started watching YouTube when I was maybe 11, 12. Mm. That's a baby. But now you got kids born into it for real. I remember coming from the analog days of cassettes and all that. I, I recorded my own mixtapes off the off the off the radio. Mm. I, I've done it. I've, I've been around eight tracks around my grandma, okay. vinyls around my daddy. I, like I I'm saying, saying, I'm I'm an old school saying. cat. Like you yes, know what I'm saying? Yes. I see what you're saying. You still consider that baby? Well, when I think of in terms of YouTube baby. For me, like you, I'm a baby. I, you you made YouTube popular. When your videos started circulating, I remember why. Man, I remember watching just just the long faith, consistency, and hard work. I probably watched that thousands of times. You know how many people got tattoos of that on their bodies? Man, the inspiration. It was just the 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 motivation. The insp It was like all the years that you had grinded was put into that one fucking video. I watched it all the time. And this is when I was living in Hagerstown. I was in my first bankruptcy. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and your that video, oh my God, it was just like, I would just watch it whenever I got discouraged. That, that. I'm going to put a clip of it in here. Is C-H-W. And what does that stand for? Faith, consistency, and hard work. Those are the only keys you need to make it in this game of life. That brand was created on Jay-Z's birthday. Really? Yeah, 2011. Okay. December 4th, 2011. <laughs> oh. I'm a Sagittarius. Okay. <laughs> you knew that? No, I did not oh, know Lord. you. Why you laughing? I don't get into like, <laughs> oh, okay. my bad. like that. My bad, my bad. I mean, I know I'm a Pisces and oh, I'm creative. Well, my mama Pisces. Yeah. I'm, so, okay, all right. Yeah. Now, now you're like, oh, okay, my mama Pisces. Give me that glass. Come on. Let me see. You're getting low there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 here we go. It makes you relax. You, I do have consent, right? You got okay, consent, right, cool, consent, cool. consent. Right. Hey, you know, you know, you know. <laughs> What's up? I had something too, you know, where you know, since you want to bring up the whole consent thing. What's up? Uh, I, you know, I want to go into this real quick. It's been a tough month. It's been a, a tough three, four months uh, for, for 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 black men, and, and I want I want to say from what September to December. You talking about you, the Diddy shit? Oh, twenty twenty three. Yeah, you seen it? Yeah. Now I came up with this thing, okay. and I said this. Uh oh, here you go. No, I'm listening. Uh -oh, I'm, li looking. I'm listening. Looking. I'm listening. I came up with this thing. I said, you know what, man? Obviously, we know the ratio to black men to black women is going down on sexual charges and stuff like that, and assault charges. Black men, it's like it's almost like it's nine to one. It's almost, hold on. Okay. Now I said this. I said, you know what? 
if they ever give me another movie or if I ever walk a red carpet or something and I catch a woman grabbing my dangling, I'm calling the police. You should. I'm dead serious. Nobody should be doing that. Especially if it's a public figure, I'm going for 90 million. <laughs> They'll settle in. I want eight everything. Hours. I, <laughs> I want everything. Everything? Everything. everything. <laughs> I want everything. Hey, please grab mine. Now they're going to use that against you in court. He <laughs> told me to grab it. <laughs> oh, why you, did, why you did that? See? I deal with this shit for a living. Well, you kind of told her. So, I mean, it's really. Hey, you gave Hey, I do not consent for anybody touching my. Don't, don't don't grab me. I'm calling the police. It's true, though. And I don't want to hear all the all the blogs or whatever coming out talking about, oh, he weak. This, no, 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 bro. No. <laughs> See the boys up. Crunch your boys up. <laughs> no, nah, bro. And so, hey, hey, and this is not making jokes right. about like real situations, but it's it's just like, hey, man, if you can't get it all across the board, I don't really want to hear nothing. I'm exhausted about all this stuff I hear. Listen, everybody got to get their money. They got to get their money. So yeah, hey, I see listen, it. I ain't hating on them. Get it. Okay. Now, back to that video, Fake Assistant and Hard Work. So when you enter the YouTube space, like what, that was your first video. You said you put it up to a reaction video. You put mm -hmm. up a reaction video. Mm -hmm. How often were you making videos after you did the reaction video? Was it something like you just did once a month? Or it was it like kinda... maybe every, I don't know, two times a month. Okay. And, and then when it got for real, I did it two times a week. So how long did it take it every to get for real? Before it became like a real thing. February 2011. Were you monetized? Yeah, I've been monetized since since um 2010. What was your first check on YouTube? I didn't beat the threshold. You know tomorrow. She had a hundred dollars. <laughs> 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 I didn't beat it, so I had to wait like a you know a couple months. Yeah, I don't know, maybe like mm, three hundred dollars. Okay, that's more than what my first check was. Yeah. Mine was a hundred and I want to say about maybe three hundred dollars, something like that. Maybe two, three. Yeah, I can't remember. It was it was low, but it, it was cool. Okay, and so did they they gradually go up, or was it just kind of three hundred? Uh, it was for like the same until that year. So they were three hundred dollars. It was like. Three, six, seven here. Okay. But it didn't really go up until I actually quit my job when I said I'm doing this full time. That happened to me too. Yeah. I was making 150 and 300 and then actually I had no choice but to quit because they were going to fire me and I didn't want it on record. Because I look at it like this. I, I, my whole motto was I'm like, all right, well, I'm, I'm already paid. I already got a side job waiting for me to go mm -hmm. and I want to make it my main. How do I go about, how do I go about doing it? Mm. If I'm already, I'm looking at my at my peers in college, they spending four to eight years in college doing what they do. They um, studying overtime for exams. You know, you know how hard they work. I know. They <laughs> they got sleepless nights. Yeah. You know, barely getting by, broke all this stuff, got jobs and everything. And I'm like, you know what, roommates. I'm like, you know what, if I can put that same amount of energy of what they put into somebody else's stuff or what they want to do outside of college. You know, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. And put that then, then I know for a fact I can do it in my lane. Right. So I pretty much applied the same schedule. I was already working from two to ten, nine to five. I had like two jobs. I was working for real, for real, like with college on the side. I was I wasn't getting no sleep. So it just gave you the inspiration to just say, "I'm a bet on me." Yeah. And how old were you? I was twenty-two. And see, a, a lot of people at twenty-two don't have that type of. Push. Mm, well, my mama, she wasn't playing that shit. So. What you mean? She wasn't playing that. You mean for the lip in her house? She was or? one of those, uh, you know, when you turn eighteen, you get not type. But I was the type. I wasn't arguing with. Her. I wasn't going back and forth with. Her. Mm -hmm. It was more so like a, and she wasn't abusive or nothing like that. It was just yeah. that when you turn eighteen, you're my only boy. Mm. When you turn eighteen, you got to go. My dad had already died when I was ten, so oh, I was damn. already the man of the house. How he died? He died of a heart attack. Oh gosh! When I would, when he was playing uh, basketball at the, the St. Petersburg Fire Department. So he was young. He was fifty. That's young. That's really young. Yeah. Damn. I know I'm smiling and everything, but you know. I was gonna say. No, 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 no. You know, I'm just. It's just other stuff. You know, we good. You happy? 
No, nah, I ain't happy about it. <laughs> okay. No, 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 no. When you say young, it just, I remember saying that to my grandmother when, when, uh, when I was younger. I thought 50 used to be old. Mm. Like I'm 10 years old, so I'm thinking 50 is old. Mm. But that's my stepdaddy too, though. That ain't my real daddy. Okay. Where is your real dad? Where is my real dad? Yeah. He's somewhere around here. You met him? Yeah. I okay. met him when I was... I met him in 2018. For the first time. Well, I knew him, but he left when I was two. Does he look like you? He looks just like me. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I try to say you look. I try to say I'm like I look like my mama, but uh, is it? Why did he leave? Everybody keeps telling me. Yeah, your daddy's your twin. Oh, like, why did you leave? I wish why I had leave? my phone. I, hey, I'm I know he you. look like you. He looks just like me. I'm a junior. He's a senior. Okay, so you have his name. Yeah, but my stepdaddy, we all had the same name. I got a John, got, John, John. Yeah. So your mama just loved Johns. Well, hold on, <laughs> mama. We ain't finna go here. <laughs> but hold on. My stepdaddy name was Johnny. Okay. My stepbrother name was Johnny as well. He was a John Jun a Johnny J Junior as well. Okay. I'm J I got a John Senior. Okay. And I'm John Junior. It's for John. It my daddy named John. Damn. He, he named my sister he named my sister to John Duh. God damn. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> He ain't right. getting no boys, so he All said, right. well, I just had to add to the Johns, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Yeah. It was just funny. I, I was going to say, does he look, I, I could just tell he nah, looked he like looks just like me. He, Why he, did he leave? He just got freckles and he got, he light skin. Okay. Well, <laughs> funny, because I'm like picturing your daddy. Yeah, a, a lighter version of me, but with freckles and he got a full blown beard. Is he silly like you too? I don't know. Okay. Your mom ain't never tell you well, that. Well, we, well, we, we when I when I met him, we got like very similar traits. I can tell why I'm, why I am the way I am though. Okay, so it gave you that closure. Yeah, that you was missing. But I wasn't looking for him though. I wasn't looking for all my siblings. You got a lot of siblings <laughs> in Florida. That's why I never dated nobody in Florida. <laughs> my great granddaddy had twenty seven children. My dad, yeah. I don't even know how many my dad had. We got cousins, uncles. I found all my... I went, fat I went motherfuckers look, was fucking. I went, I went looking for all my siblings except uh, one of them, my baby sister. How many? Two sisters and... Um, we can mean my daddy or my... What? All together. Well... <laughs> 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 Niggas was fucking back in the day. <laughs> it ain't that bad. <laughs> From what he told me. Uh, the ones he claimed. I got. You talking about in total? Yes. His or just in total? All in total. <laughs> now, when I, now, when I say brothers, do I. If I if I got two, do I this count me for three? This is, ladies and gentlemen, you all right, all right. witnessing what it's like to be raised, <laughs> born and raised in Florida. Because <laughs> I can't count. Go ahead. Florida uh, is like a mini Africa. Hold on. <laughs> Go ahead. Them niggas be fucking. They got shit to do. Oh, shit. Just be fucking. Uh, <laughs> can't fuck like that. New York is too expensive. Hold on. Let me get one more. Hold on. Hold on. You can't even get. He trying to count like my lips pillow. Like, no, lips no, I'm, I'm watching. I'm watching. Okay. Um, <laughs> from the last time my dad told me, and this was maybe a couple months ago. I know I had. I know I. I, I got four. I got four sisters. Two brothers. Mm -hmm. But I count so. Okay. But he say he got more out there. Now, see, and that's why I never dated nobody from Florida, because there's a chance I could have fucked my brother and never knew it. My brother... Well, I will say this. ...has a baby with my first cousin. Well, I will say this, and I'm not going to go too far about my dad, because I do love my dad, okay. but I will say this. He a playboy. Because he was at Ebor City one day, okay. and a girl DM'd me. You know, you check the back end of the, of the DM. Yeah. I wonder, I'm just scrolling down, just trying to see oh, what's on here. And she said, "Hey, is your dad 
such and such. And I'm like, I ain't know whether to say yes or no. And she, I was like, yeah. She said, um, yeah, he was the sweetheart. Um, he ordered drinks and, and food for me and my friends and everything. And uh, I just wanted to make sure that uh, this was your dad because he said that uh, he was your dad. Aww. And what I did was I said, hell yeah, that's my daddy. <laughs> 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 yeah, that right, that's my daddy. Aww. The fact that he out here like that's my son, you yeah. know my son. Yeah. My daddy be doing that. He be calling yeah. me on three way though with girls. He be trying to fuck. Though. But I think he be doing it like he kind of flipping the police back. Hey, spoken reason, daddy. You hear me? <laughs> my dad do say, say shit. I swear to God, pocket. like yeah, they do, they be using us to get pussy. They yeah. My I daddy do say shit. He, he, he he's like, hey baby, what you doing? I was like, I'm good. And the girl was like, oh my god, it's Sasha K. And I was like, daddy, who the fuck you got on the phone? <laughs> like for real. Okay. <clears throat> So, obviously, your dad had been watching you, mm -hmm. and but you didn't even know it. He's my daddy. My father is the one that died. That's the one I who I give the most credit that. to. All right. I understand that. However, but your biological father mm -hmm. had known and had watched you, just like we watched you, grow before our eyes on YouTube. Yeah. He found out, eventually. Okay. All right. Now... Let's go back to the YouTube part of it. So you quit your job. You're making $300, $700, $800. $800 you quit your job. When did them checks start to get pretty big? Immediately. What was the, what was the first well, big like, one? Like I say, my immediately. See, we ain't, we ain't going to be talking. You know what I'm saying? No, 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 no. This, we're talking about 2008, my, my, 2009. My, my, my immediately didn't start until like 2011. Okay. So what's your immediately? What's your immediately? Uh, going from maybe seven hundred dollars to seven thousand dollars off rip. And now for two thousand fucking eleven, that's a lot. But, of but it, money. it got way better though along How, the year. What's the most you made though? Let's go, let's go, big spoke. Well, I've said this online before, and here's the crazy part. What's up? I've said this on on another platform. I've only said it one time. It ain't shit. I ain't made nothing. Six thousand dollars. What is that? Sixty thousand. That's it. For you was what was that like? Twenty eleven, twenty thirteen. It was around that time. And I you were say. a African American young man making more money. Mm -hmm. But than but black. I would, but I would, but I would say before that I was making probably around on an estimate between maybe ten. 10 to maybe 20 a month, something like that. Just, just alone before it actually boom, and that 60 didn't last long. But here's the thing. You were making more money than black talent was making in Hollywood. Yeah, I had a whole team running and everything. I was basically, I was moving around like like that, like a young boss. At what age? What age? Yeah. 22. That's a lot of fucking with like money. A, with like a roster, maybe like, I don't know, maybe to nine to maybe 12 people. 22. That don't include my agent. I got maybe when I started my agency with UTA, I automatically had three agents off RIP. I had my manager, Steve Rifkin. You know Did you have to is? pay all them? Do you, know, do you know who Steve Rifkin is? No. You'll understand. I, you, Go ahead. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You'll get to it later. Okay. Uh, Russell Simmons, that don't, that, that that doesn't include a cameraman. I probably got like two or three of them. That don't include my assistant. That don't include, you know how I go with lawyers. It may be like, maybe at least about 12 people. Yeah. Yeah. So, you were paying all of them? Yeah. You were paying Russell Simmons? Russell never really made money off me like that. He made money off my head, but he but he wasn't like on contract with me for comedy. Um, Russell was was like this. Will we go into the ADD thing? Okay. All deaf digital. Yes. You ever heard of that? No, I I didn't hear. Okay. It about yeah, yeah, yeah. See. Okay. Uh, it was a whole company that got started <clears throat> by um, by Russell Simmons and Steve Rifkin, and also an, another director named Brian Robbins. Brian Robbins started um, Norbert. Keenan and Kel, all that, the whole nineties Nickelodeon. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, he was a part of all that. He did. Yeah. He did a thousand words. Um, he's been a part of a lot of things. I think he owns DreamWorks oh. or whatever. Yeah, the studio. 
He was I the one that took Steven me into. He was, look, people don't understand how deep oh, this is. He yeah. took he took me into my agency and said, "This our boy." Not boy like I that. I was gonna say. Yeah, not like nigga. that. Nigga, look. But not like that. You know what I mean? Okay, like this. But this is this is this is we co-signed him. Okay. Yeah, it's way deeper than what people think. Like the spoken reason thing is way deeper than what people think. Like. So how long? I've actually been in it. In what? But not on some crazy shit though. Like in what? I've never. Let's go ahead and get straight to it. I ain't never seen no crazy stuff. I ain't never seen nothing. The most I probably probably got close to seeing is me walking in the room and I smelled Badussy in the doggone room. And then me and my homie was like, what the fuck does that smell? And then, you know, we ain't see nothing. They just took us in a room and we just had a meeting. We walked out. So you're saying the Illuminati doesn't Hold on, hold on. You said Illuminati. Now here you go. Oh, oh, here it go. Or these orgy party. I wasn't going to get I've never, to that I've yet. Never, I've, I've, never, to I've never seen it. I've never seen it. <clears throat> I've never seen it. I I was trying to unwind the fake consistency of hard work. Oh, well, well let's go back. <laughs> let's go but back. But since we're here now, like, because oh, yeah. I mean, I was going <laughs> to eventually get to that. Like, what was your experience in Hollywood? Because there's so many. <laughs> <laughs> they said, the fuck it. Put it on the table, Tasha. <laughs> nah, but I ain't never, you know, I know people, that's what people want to hear. So, but you, but you did say in one of your videos as to why you left Hollywood. And you said, and one thing that caught my 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 attention was I didn't have to do no fucking uh, uh, coon ass shit by wearing a dress and emasculating myself and doing no fucking dumb shit like that to get put on. That's what you said. Yeah. Yeah. Never had to do none of it. I came in as. But my you own. had the owner of DreamWorks walk you right into UTA. But you understand, all right, Steve Ripkin, Steve Ripkin. And like I say, this is no shades or nothing. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm still with the white man around here. Yeah, I, what? I, 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 you're I, I, here. I'm, hey, I'm, just, I, I'm with the I, white I'm man just, too. I, 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 we all are. <laughs> and that's another thing too. Y'all got. I'm not with nobody, look, brother. I'm a hundred percent independent. No, you ain't. No, we're not. Because guess what? While you think you're hundred percent independent, where you gonna upload it at? <laughs> Where's you gonna upload it at? You over here talking about. Where? I'm 100 percent black power independent up in this Joker, and the next thing you know, you put it on Snapchat, and them white folks snatch your shit down. <laughs> I said you don't own nothing around here. We don't own boats. We don't. We don't. We don't own boats. We don't own 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 planes. We don't own none of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes. like, come on now. Like, what's really going on? If we were really, if you really 100 percent independent, focus on your website and don't go to Patreon. Shots fired. What? Shots fired. Not to you. It's a lot, not to me. There's a oh, lot of niggas out hey, here hey, I, that's hey, on Patreon. That, I understand. That's still owned by the white man. They've but been in the what, industry though? for but, a long but, time. But, but guess what? When though? I saw Noriega talking about, but, Joe, how do you start a Patreon? Nigga, what? Upload, bitch. Exactly. It's easy because it's already there for you. <laughs> yes. But guess what? Your website is just you. It's just you. You pay for your domain, you pay for everything. You pay for the uh, the designer, the the the, per the person that code your whole entire website, your your app. That's all you. You own that. They can't do nothing about that. So if you really want to make a big difference for real, I, it, there's nothing wrong with using third party platforms to do what you do, to get whatever you need to maximize whatever your goal is. But never forget, the real power is where your website is at. Yes, GoFundMe and uh, Patreon and all these the OnlyFans, yeah, they may pay you, they may help you, but in any given moment, y'all already know, and this is 2024, at any given moment, it could cut off like, all they gotta do is say, I don't like this person. Hey, uh, hey, can y'all call up um, uh, uh, Sarah such and such in the such and such department? Okay, hold on. Do, 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 do. Hello, this is Sarah. Uh, hey, this is Dave Mackensfield. Mm -hmm. uh, we just want to make sure, um, you know, um, uh, have you heard and been aware of this type of situation? Uh, I've heard a little bit about it. Hey, hit the button. Do it now. That's all it takes. Next thing you know, you're looking up from behind your computer and your phone to my, girl, I just got demonetized the D. The way it was the way you said it. it ain't funny because it does happen. And then and then they and then they go calling us. It's like creators they, that thinking I thinking that we gonna call we we gonna put some <laughs> phone calls in. Like I, nigga, I, 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 I can barely like, get shit for myself. I'm only in one movie. I had to tell a creator one day. I <laughs> went through, she got demonetized. I went through her channel and I said, Girl, Bruh. you gotta delete all this shit. 
You have she to. She says, what? I say, you got, if you want to be remonetized, you got to delete all this shit. She did, she did exactly what I told her to do. They remonetized her. Exactly. They remonetize it. Exactly. That's why. That's why I'm about to get out here and start teaching this <laughs> shit because, like, a, there's a lot of black people that really solely depend on this, and I'm like, yeah, Patreon shut me down. And, oh, for real? Yes. Oh, so I just what I just said no. was real. Oh, so that's, that's why, why you were saying that. Oh. <laughs> hey, I didn't even know that. Patreon shut me down. Somebody put in. Look. That's a all it takes. trademark. It was not true. That's all it takes. All look, the viewers look, that I had moved we, to their platform, we, they were making money off of me, and they said bye bye. And this is why. I And that was to, the last time I was on it. They they released me and asked me to come back to my oh we're sorry, but you you held my money for thirty days, thirty days over a fake complaint. A fa- and you wouldn't even have a Patreon if it wasn't for creators busting their fucking ass to bring their audience. Who would be going to Patreon if it wasn't for our audiences? It ain't like they just got content just over there like YouTube. But 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 the thing is too, it goes a lot deeper because a lot of folks feel like like I say, OnlyFans and Patreon, that's where it ends at. No, oh, Patreon oh, froze yeah. Selena Power one day. That's what I'm saying. So this is why. All right, the only all right. Let's go back to the old days where you had uh, media takeout, yeah. Bossip, NicoleBitchy.com, uh-huh. um, World Star Hip Hop, blog. Sandra, Sandra Rose. Blogging, blogging. Remember that? Yeah, Remember that? Yeah, Remember that? You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, don't, don't think I don't know now. Straight from the A. Come on now. Famous. I know, I know the YBF and all that. Come on Famous. now. Famous. Come on now. That was blog, so, blog. But, but yeah. those were independent blogs that and were they, that were getting killings from companies that were coming in saying, "Hey, you know, they they could have came up with their stuff." And what happens? What happened was over time was they got shut down because of all the other platforms like the Instagrams or whatever, the uh-huh. Snapchats, the Twitters, the Vine. People start uploading news on those type of things, mm-hmm. right? And then. Once it's on there and people know that it's free, you got so many people doing work for free, slave work, you create a gazillion amount of those folks to the point that where you raising like a nine year old, a 12 year old, a 15 year old, a 31 year old, they looking at it and they might grow with you over time. So they look at your platform and they say, well, why would I go to NicoleBitchy.com when everything's right here when I open my phone? It gets crazy. So now the marketers, those people were really eating back then. Like when they had a website, they were really eating. Oh my God. And they said, you know what? Let's take it away. Let's put it through our people again. And then we're going to use, if y'all don't get y'all cussing and stuff right, we're not going to pay you. So now they got us really under control under some like, under, under some like TV stuff or what it was back in the day. When we first came on the internet, we could cuss how we wanted to. Mm-hmm. You can if you want to, but you know how it go. Now it's more so like, all right, now that we don't strip all that away from y'all, now we got y'all back on our platforms. Now we got y'all and showed y'all that the rules need to be regulated. We will suspend your channel, whatever the case may be. What we're going to do is we're going to show y'all, hey, it ain't no different from what it was on TV. Now y'all can't say nothing outside of ass, hell, and damn. Anything outside of that, then you got to be like, ah, I don't know if I should say that on this because I might get demonetized. Like, it's, it's really crazy. I'm telling you, I, I literally, they get mad at me on YouTube. They're like, you give us the water down shit. Them crackers said. Oh, Lord. I can't cuss. <laughs> Go ahead. I can cuss on other, on, on, on websites. Yeah. yeah. TashaKLive.com, I yeah. cuss it the fuck down. Yeah. Just like they, they coming into a real comedy show, like open raw show. Like, yeah, yeah. But they have to understand, like, I'm not going, I'm not one of those niggas or Negroes that's got something to prove. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. I got a whole family and, and people that depend on me that 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 yeah. lives off of this. Yeah, yeah. So just because I'm trying to prove a point, fuck these, I don't need them, I'm a cuss, demonetize, and then before you know it, how many times <laughs> we how already many got Tommy going on and everything. Like, you know what I'm saying? We got job. Look, you need the internet these days. Anybody you say need it. Look, bro, if you ain't got your own, if you ain't making, you know how like Joe, um, What's the dude name who got kicked off of, um, it ain't Joe Rogan, it's another, uh, Alex Jones. Alex Jones, but he had his website. Exactly. So he really wasn't gone. His fans hey, just was like, hey, oh, we're going to the website. If y'all want to, if y'all, look, I'm going to give y'all one tip. I'm going to give y'all multiple tips, but it's going to be one of the main ones. If y'all want to win 
off of social media, create your own website and figure out how to get Google AdSense on your website. That's one of them. I ain't gonna say too much. They gotta pay you for it. Yeah. They should. That's it. And that's normal. They should. That was happening years ago. They should. So they should pay you for it. And they got other stuff out there too, like info links and stuff like that too as well. So. But let me ask you something. When you because you were doing really well on YouTube, inspiring us all, making us all laugh. You had the creator beefs. I've had the creator beefs. Whatever. Mm. Then you enter Hollywood. And it's sort of like you kind of walked away from your channel straight into Hollywood. <laughs> that's not what happened? That's what happened because that's what you saw. That's what happened. It happened. That was more so like a, um, when I first got into mainstream Hollywood, it wasn't like, like I wanted to be in a movie. But I didn't hope and pray and be like, I want to be the biggest star. And I never thought about that. I just wanted to be in a movie. Mm -hmm. So when I did the movie with Sandra Bullock and I came back What was home, the name of that movie again? The Heat. The Heat, okay. With Sandra Bullock and okay. Melissa McCarthy. Okay. When I, Marlon Wayne's in it too. Okay. Um, when I did the movie with, with her, I went back home and my manager said, you need to move to LA. I was going to get a house built here. In Fort Lauderdale? Yeah. Oh. I was just like getting it all set up and everything. And I, I had a meeting the next day and it was between getting my house built here and going to LA. You still should have did it. No, nah, but I know. I know. <laughs> I know. You right. Yeah. 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 Now I think about it. It's mm -hmm. for real. But I also, I was like, you know what? Because I don't like attention. Mm. A lot of folks, they looking at me like, man, this nigga lying. How you out here and you doing entertainment and you don't like attention? I really don't like attention. I like I like the the thank yous or whatever or whatever the case mm -hmm. may be, but that's pretty much it. But um, you know, I just went from there and um, you know that's it's wine hitting. <laughs> I wasn't finna talk stupid. I wasn't finna <laughs> catch myself up like this. Nah, I wasn't gonna do that. Nah, what is it? Peanut? What, what is it? <laughs> No, I wasn't finna. I wasn't finna go no further. I felt. I felt that. You know how you feel it coming when you when when it hits you. Nah, bro, I, you ain't gonna catch me. Mm -mm. Nah, I already know. I'm. I'm, I'm gonna, look, you know what's so funny? No, nah, my husband used to laugh at because, me when because I drank before, it. Before before it go too far. Look. No, it's for real. You I swear to God. Just recently, my husband hates wine. He was like, "You always order this stuff." Nah, this just snuck up on me, bro. He he drank two glasses. His ass was like, "Oh shit." Uh, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> I said, that white lady, why I got you fucked up? You said, <laughs> what you said now? You was building a house. That's the last part. What you But said? you did build a house. And you said you don't like a lot of attention and stuff. Oh, 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 oh. Um, what made me. Yeah. But what made you just walk away from everything that you was building straight into uh, Hollywood? What type I, of check I, because did because they give you? Because I like my peace. I like my piece for real, for real. Dead serious. So you didn't like the no, attention seriously. you was getting from this YouTube. is is probably the biggest thing when people don't understand about me. Hold what? On. So it wasn't because of Hollywood. You just got tired of the fame. I went home and I started realizing that everybody was getting old. Like my grandma getting older, my mama getting older. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm okay. missing out on shit like that. I know other people. They like, man, fuck my goddamn family. I don't care about that. I'm finna go to Hollywood. The shit ain't real. Like, so when I got there, I'm like, bro, I'm already like a Florida boy. When you're a Florida boy, when you're from Florida or you're from the South and you go to the West Coast, the only people I hang out with hang out with over there for real that's on the West Coast are people that's from the West Coast that's really from there. Mm. I don't hang out with people that's out there trying to chase the dream. It might be maybe one, maybe two, but the rest of them, they're locals. So I don't really get into all that. I, I, I went there because I was on a mission to try to see what was there for me. And then all of a sudden, you know, I'm like, you know what? Let me go ahead and catch my piece. I got tired of going to like five different meetings, five different auditions in a week. And you sitting there, you got to sabotage your YouTube channel in order to chase somebody else's dream. I'm already doing my thing over here. So why would I, you know, okay, I, I'm, I'm living a, a life that nobody ever seen before. Right now, the only thing people know is what they see. If they don't see a movie, uh, he out there wasting time or whatever the case may be. No, I had to go on like 
me and my partner too, we had to go on like maybe four meetings a day for like four or five days a week. And then I probably get like maybe three to maybe five auditions within a week. And I had to, sometimes you'll get them the night before. So while you're already planning your videos, trying to get it gone, you got this Hollywood script sitting here waiting. You gotta, now you got to pick gotta and memorize. choose. Now you don't already drop by $5,000, $10,000 on a production for yourself. Now you got to pick and choose which one is more important. Now you got your agent and everybody else getting mad at you because they're like, you know what? Then why you ain't doing this? And I'm like, bro, I'm trying to do this. So now you got other agent. An uh, agent looked me in my eye and said, do you want to do YouTube forever? And I said, nigga, yes. <laughs> he looked at me like I was crazy. He stopped representing me right after that. He stopped. Yeah, but I still had other agents, though. I got one main one. I didn't fire the agents that yeah. I have. I, I'm still with them. I'm still tapped in. Yeah. I'm going to always be tapped in, if that makes sense. No, I understand what you're saying. I'm, they, can't, they won't let me go. Because you ain't really just, you ain't really got started yet. Look, when you look at Tyler Perry, Tyler Perry couldn't be a millionaire by himself for that long. You can't be a millionaire that long by yourself. Somebody going to come in and knock on your door. I didn't go knocking on Hollywood's door. They came knocking on mine. They, I didn't ask for none of that. I'm just a, a, a nigga in Florida just chilling, want to take care of his family and just have fun. Then it became business. And did then everything the started away? looking different. That's when all the Dr. Reasons and everything started coming around. Dr. Reasons is the only thing I've never edited. I why? Know, why? It, ain't, it wasn't mine. It don't belong to me. It belonged to ADD. All deaf digital. Oh. They could literally create back then they created whole YouTube channel. Like a lot of moles like for real, like Jay-Z. Like remember those old YouTube networks? Yeah. Yeah. yeah YouTube gave out a lot of money to a lot of moguls back then. And they all were trying to build up their stuff. Like this, Vice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So this is why you were seeing creators back in the day, maybe like five years ago, seven years ago. Whenever you see people like maybe like a, a A-list actor or something like that, they'll say, "Hey, um, DC Young Fly, we need you. You know, uh, Jess Hilarious, we need you. Come mm -hmm. over here. Let's put our arms around you so we can blow our stuff up. We, we might give you a couple little skits, give you a little couple hundred dollars, and we go on about your way. And that's this is why you see what you see. A lot of them didn't make it though. It's only a few that's still around. Like who? <laughs> <laughs> who, didn't make, who, who didn't make it? Let's just start, let's just who didn't make it. <laughs> you giving me shit I didn't even know. I know a lot of shit. You know all them Forbes? Yeah. Okay, you know that. Yeah, the four. You talking about the the magazine? You know, I had two 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 record deals. No, who you had a record deal with? Universal. Really? Yep. My biggest album is called Understanding My Flaw. That's the only my, my biggest album is the one that really pays me the most, and I've never had any video or any visuals or nothing behind it. I just made it just off the scratch. And you still getting paid from it to this day? My music still does what it does. That's what people sleep on too. I do everything. It ain't just comedy. Like, it be some months where, certs, where certain lanes pay me more than certain lanes. You know I got a successful uh, uh, YouTube channel, uh, 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 podcast channel? No. It's big on Facebook called Unspoken Truth. I did not know that. Yeah, that's my biggest thing, what I'm doing right now. Really? Unspoken Let me go Truth. on over there and follow. It's, it's on Facebook. Now, on YouTube, it's still going, but on Facebook, it's been there. It's, it's crack over there. How often do you upload? Every day. Sometimes I might, you know, respend some videos. Spoken, true. No, no, type in spoken reason. Spoken reasons. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. I didn't even know. See, that. I'm not really. I, I don't. I don't like to be loud about how I make my money. And I'm following you. You follow me? Yes. Oh, okay. And I'm not so getting your. I'm not you getting your down. stuff. Yeah. Well, people okay. get them. I'm more viral on Facebook right now than I am on any other platform. So when people say where he at. I'm somewhere you just don't, you know. I, so do, uh, do these creators work under you? No. Nah. Fair use. How you do that? 
The reactional video is fair use. You have a right to fair use. Okay, no. Do you know what I'm saying? I didn't think that was you right there. Yeah, that's me. Oh, oh, yeah. That's why I was like, who the hell yeah. is this nigga? That's you look me. like a Rastafarian. That's me. <laughs> what? <laughs> Hey. You know what I noticed too? Because when you had grew them dreads, and when you started out, you started out like this, very clean cut. You know what I'm saying? Then you grew them dreads. I got mad when you grew them fucking dreads. And then now you come back in like the smoking reasons we fucking do. Okay? Hey man, Faith, I, consistency, hard work. But I started my dreads before I, before all this stuff. So, you know, y'all y'all caught me in the prime age of my, of my, my haircut. Oh, it's all good. I this shit's as funny as fuck. Damn, you got content. And fa that Facebook check hit hit harder than YouTube. It people, do. People don't know. I will say this too. People don't know how to watch their mouth on Facebook. Mm. You got to watch your mouth. Like like some uh, platform people, they... Uh, you have to edit every cuss word out. They don't play. But it's, it's way deeper than just the cuss words. You got to really read all the rules on Facebook. Mm. If you don't, then you gone. You out of there. Thank you. Yeah, man. Facebook don't play, bro. I know they don't. YouTube is a public library. Facebook is a family reunion slash cookout. Twitter is the cafeteria and the lunchroom. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't never seen nobody put it like that. That's funny as fuck. What's Instagram? <laughs> Instagram is the yearbook. <laughs> <laughs> it's the so, yearbook. So, before this wine gets you towed the fuck up, what happened with Russell Simmons? That nigga living in Bali somewhere right You're now. He's a grown man. I don't know. <laughs> I, ain't, I I don't know nothing about cuz. No, I'm saying, what happened between y'all work relationship? Oh, it just, things just split apart. One thing I know about life is all good and bad things must come to an end. Did you like working with him? It was cool. I mean, I ain't really worked with him like that. He was just. I look when you look up all Dev Digital. This ain't nothing like Pee Wee. Okay. The shit. The channel started off the the back of me, like literally. All my fans started all Dev Digital, and then all the other creators and came. They Did came he in. pay you for that though? Of course. Okay. Yeah, I got paid for it. Okay. Nobody no get, residuals or nobody anything? Nobody get paid. No. Okay. Nobody get paid what they worth, though. Most people don't okay. get paid what they worth. You might feel like you want $80,000, you might get sixty two. And sometimes you got to play the negotiation game and figure out what you want. But they were definitely playing white creators more. Not ADD. Yeah, yeah. Well, YouTube at the time, yes. yes. But 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 when during the time when ADD was around, when the creators were getting all effed over, even, even me. This okay. is why I be getting mad about, you know, a lot of situations when it comes to, like, how people perceive creators, and it really ain't like that. A lot of them are really out here really trying to get it in, and they're doing it trying to die for y'all. And I tell niggas quick, I ain't trying to die for none of y'all niggas. <laughs> What's the tech guy named Marcus Brownlee? He just made a, video, a reaction video to a lot of creators that have been on YouTube for years that were leaving YouTube because of the burnout. Wait, say it again? Marcus oh. Brownlee, who does all the reviews on the phones, the white, the black guy. He got them big hands. He's like, okay, guys, so this new phone. You never heard of Marcus Brownlee? Maybe. There's a huge following in all the right. tech industry, right? Mm -hmm. Only black guy. Um, and he pisses me off, too, because I, you know, he only puts on white people when it comes to like his shows and stuff. And I'm like, you black, put us on. You know what I'm saying? And so um, <clears throat> he ended up doing a review of other YouTubers saying that they were quitting YouTube because they were burnt out. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they enjoyed it, but it was just too hard to keep up with the algorithm and trying to stay relevant and coming up with new creative ideas and stuff like that. And so he was just like, you know, YouTube, you know, it, it it's essentially a stepping stone, mm -hmm. you know? It all is. It all is. Look, man, I'm going to go down deeper than this. Please. If you really want... Look, when you on social media, I don't give a dog on what platform you on. You ain't got no retirement plan for this whole thing. The only retirement is is that you hope that you get enough money 
to leave and up, leave around for your kids and your family and everything else. And then you hope that hope and everybody got different programs. So don't think about me or her or think about all of us. Some people, they die. They ain't got nothing there. Yeah, their family try to break into their account and try to repost their videos and everything. And then, unfortunately, depending on what type of content content you had, if it's not timeless or whatever the case may be, or if you wasn't really like out here, it's going to die eventually. Don't nobody really got real true retirement plans when it comes to online. So the best thing you could do is create your own. Because when you create your own, that is, that is your intellectual property. That is your intellectual property. It's almost like it, that, that's no different from owning a house. It's no different. Like, like, but they can still come take your house though. Just like, say for example, yeah, and they can take that shit too. Hold on, <laughs> like if you don't pay your domain, they're right. gonna take that. They're gonna, they take, gonna take it, right? Yes. But it's the same thing. But you know, you gotta pay regardless. But what I'm saying is though, at the end of the day, man, people gotta realize like, you, you can't escape having your own regardless in the realm of trying to do social media. You got to have your own somewhere. Just, just like you said, it's a stepping stone. But how do I get to leave something around so my family can eat for the rest of my life? Some people got investments. Some people got uh, property. Some people have videos and movies waiting and ready to go. If you look at Tyler Perry, whole body of work, Tyler Perry was the only person, one of the few people, I'm not going to say the only person, that when he came out, he not only shot the play, he put a price on it, and he sold it to everybody, and now he got a catalog. Mm. Now you got a black man running around here with a catalog, and white people are like, dang, he making millions off that joker, bro. We got we to gotta snatch him up. We got to put him on Lionsgate. Why you think every time Tyler Perry, when he do, vid do movies, he don't go past Lionsgate? <laughs> Lionsgate is like the black, it's like the black owned... It ain't black owned, but that's like the studio that they send to black people yeah. when they do social media. I mean, when they do them um, and Deb Mar Mercury when they do film. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. All that went through Lionsgate, and it's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, I'm just saying people be thinking all this stuff, and it's really deeper. Like I got a lot to bring to the table and really say to folks, but it's like when I hear people talking. And I would read these comments and people were saying such and such about residual checks and how Hollywood ain't paying and this, that, and the third. I'm like, how have y'all even know what y'all talking about? Because these people, they get up on here and they show their checks, but they only show the, the 49 cent checks. They show the $300 check. Tell them to show their biggest check they made that year. And then let's see how. So you think it's everything about ain't Hollywood fault, bro. <laughs> so everything. you think it's about money management? It's money management as, as well. When you're an actor, it's very hard. And if I sound cop mouth, y'all, my bad. You good. But when you're, when you're an actor in Hollywood, that is probably one of the most hardest jobs ever. Because I can't imagine being an actor full time and say, this is my life. And you living from couch. I think being an actor is way worse than maybe being a musician. It's the worst job in the world. <laughs> I, I think so. Because because I'm serious, man. Like, while you see somebody on TV, and y'all been hearing about it over the years, actors say, man, I was living out my one-bedroom apartment during that time when y'all was, uh, you know, bragging about me or whatever, uplifting me or whatever. But I mean, that is not... When you see folks in the position where they at, they either struck gold real fast or they stood around the paint for real and they deserve that joker for real. Uh, that is not something where I felt like I was like, I know I can do it, but I'm like, bro, I'm not going to sit here and waste my time and die for this shit because then, then my son going to miss out on me. So what am I going to do? So now, I'm all, now all of a sudden I'm supposed to be weird because I'm home living my life. I'm, I'm stable to my to where I want to be and I'm just taking care of my family and going fishing. I know I, I had a three hour, almost a three hour conversation with Taryn Manning and you know, you would think that her life is set. She would be like, I will be filming Orange is New Black. I will have an apartment. We will be done filming. They don't yeah. tell you if you're coming back. The checks stop. They don't tell you when you're coming back so I can't take any other projects. Yeah. And it's like they play with your time like that. Yeah. And she says, well, she, you know, and she went out on Taraji real bad. She was just like, you know, we're going to be dropping that here soon. 
And she was just like, Tarasha got paid, probably got paid more than me on Hustle and Flow because I still ain't got paid. Yeah. Uh, you and, know, like. And Terrence Howard, <clears throat> Terrence Howard came out and said that he made $12,000 for Hustle and Flow. She said he was lying. Taryn Manning said that. Hey, now, hold on. She didn't say that nigga, but she said he but lied. Hold, but hold on. I don't care about that. But but what I said from my end, mm -hmm. I've never had a starting role like that before. Not, not a starring role like that. I've never had one like that. Okay. So I'm like, you know what? Okay, he said he made 12 up front. I made 30 off the heat. <laughs> and I made way more than that. That's but, what she said. But hold on, but hold on now. She that does like, not, it, it, but yeah. that does not mean that she's right as well. Now here's the here's the part what I'm going to say. You don't get to dictate like what them folks do on the back end. Like them folks, <laughs> it's a whole other thing. Like if they want to make up their numbers, they make up their numbers. There ain't nothing you're gonna do about it. And then mm. you have the fans say, "Well, you signed the contract for this, that, and the third, yeah. bro. What are you gonna tell somebody who living out of out of a bus for the past three years?" When they got a, they finally got a role where it could take them somewhere, but at the same time they know they're being effed over money wise. They're gonna take it anyway, just to try to. Cause one thing we know that niggas love clout, so you are gonna take my clout first, and the clout from y'all responses off of social media is we're gonna put money in my pocket. <laughs> For real, <laughs> that's what's gonna do it. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, 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 it's crazy. But I kind of got upset because I was just like, all this this money, like when I see Taraji, she obviously lives a very, very different lifestyle. So when she sits in front of common folk and says, and I'm tired, mm -hmm. you have got, even though we may not have thought that life was glamorous, but I mean, not you may not have thought, she may not have thought that life was glamorous, but the way she shows up on social media, she's got PR, she's got makeup, she looks great all the time. Yeah. So we're like, life is good. Yeah. But behind the scenes, it's like, and imagine how You're hard struggling. it is. Imagine how hard it is for a woman who well, I think it's a catch twenty two, because for a woman it's hard for her because you know she got so many different things she got to take care of her, take care of as far as maintenance, her hair, her nails, yeah. make make up clothes, make sure every, like it's on just being that in Hollywood that's hard. Hell, just in just in general. And then you think about the guys, you know, while you got women that can do that, they could probably stay at a at, at a man house or whatever and go do a thing. Trying to make it in Hollywood now. Hold on. <laughs> that's that's what I'm saying. Yes. Meanwhile, you got a guy. He ain't got to do all that. Just make sure he got the script down. But it's a lot of other lions yeah. that he dealing with. And then it's like, he can't stay at everybody's house. Mm. That nigga on, he living on, you know, whatever that skip. He living on Skid Row somewhere. This is why when you look at the whole Hollywood thing, more women or or. A lot of a lot of black actresses when they're in Hollywood, when they start to hit their thirties and their forties, they tend to move on to athletes, or they tend on to move they tend to move on to somebody who, like you a producer or somebody who got Neil Long bread. getting that thirty two thousand dollar child support. Well, they do it. Away. Well, they do it. They yeah. do it because it's really really hard. They are already competing against each other in Hollywood anyway. So if I'm already who I am, and I'm walking outside and somebody at Walmart say, "Hey Nia, hey Nia." You know you don't belong in Walmart. You need to go somewhere. Now I'm not. Target. Now I'm not despaired yet. Target. Let's take it to Target. <laughs> I'm just saying. Okay. So she, she's going to put herself. You've been you've been on TV your entire life. You're not going to put yourself in position to date somebody who worked for Home Depot. Like I'm not saying that's not the lick, but at the same time, that's typically the story for black women and for black men. They just. Either they get out here and they get it, get married, or they're going to just be single. Or they go the, bag groceries. I mean, Tyler Perry got one of Yeah, yeah, yeah. Know. Usually the, the women are more taken care of <clears throat> in Hollywood as far as black women uh, than black men. I would say that. Black men, they get out here and God knows what happened to them. They might get drug charges Drugs. and all types of things yeah. going on. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, we are seeing, especially recently in the last few years, a lot of our top black talent dying of overdoses yeah and damn near the, almost the the whole uh uh what is that damn show oh, it's, it's a white show jasmine what is that show the one where they talk the, the kids are doing drugs and shit like that and i don't watch show you what is it euphoria damn near the whole cast done died of a fucking real like ods it's a show about kids doing drugs selling drugs and then the actual talent 
is dying outside of filming. So mm-hmm. they having to extend the filming to replace these roles because they're getting high. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, one, COVID hit. Two, they're not working like mm-hmm. that. Three, they don't know. That. It's a lot of stuff. COVID didn't bother me at all. No. I love COVID. It didn't bother me at all either. I stayed home. I was with my son. <laughs> I was with my son for like three, four years. I was good. I wasn't tripping. <laughs> a lot of people was, though. I, there was I a tri- lot of people that were. Yeah. Yeah. I had a baby during COVID, so I got to spend time with my son. Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so that was that was amazing. I had a quarantine baby. Yeah, he was outside. He couldn't go past the yard. Didn't want him around nobody because I didn't know they had that damn counter clock. And I was like, I'm not going to be the next body on that. Co-. And I was like, where they putting these millions of bodies at? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, man, I didn't see no mass graveyards. I didn't see no burnouts. You know, Rob has no factories and motherfuckers was burning up his mother. I was like, where they put these bodies at? I, I need to know. <laughs> y'all, this is Tasha K. Bro. I'm serious. It's Tasha K, y'all. I just, I need answers. The millions of bodies. They, they, remember the counter they had? It was on every fucking website. It was on every news show. And as the reporters were talking, the numbers just kept going. Another one died. Another one died. I hear you. You remember that shit? What the fuck happened? I don't know. And I'm trying to find somebody. If I knew anybody that died from COVID, nobody. I don't know anybody. You don't know nobody? No. You know, I kind of kept it to myself. I lost my photographer over COVID. You did? Mm-hmm. But did his family bury him and have a funeral? Mm-hmm. So what? So everybody was just having funerals during quarantine when we weren't allowed to go outside my, because they said... That picture that I told you about, of that album that I told you about, Understanding My Flaws, my my picture is on that, and he took that picture. Okay. And he's actually in one of my videos, and it was a funeral skit, which was so fucked up. Oh, damn. Yeah, I know. We did a fake funeral skit, and he was in the casket, and he died about four years later. Now I can't watch the skit no more. Don't bust out laugh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's no, hey, don't do that. Hey, don't do that. Don't do that. That's some don't, Machiavelli don't, don't, shit. Why, why, why is you That's laughing? That's some Tupac That's... Machiavelli shit. That's why motherfuckers got to be careful what they say and what they put out here. It, it is a contract. With the universe. That's why I don't cover death and shit on my channel. I don't cover death. I don't cover, uh, uh, you know, kids or disabled people and stuff. I leave that shit alone. I don't want no parts of that. I want to enjoy life while I'm here. I don't want to talk about the other side until I'm on the other side. Then I'll talk about it when I'm there amongst other people that are there with me. You understand? I don't talk How about, was your time? It was good. I don't talk about sex, religion, war, and politics. And I barely talk about education. Those, Why? Those things I do not get into. Why? Because you, it's it's a never ending. You need ba- more wine. It's it's <laughs> it's a never ending battle. Yeah, you'll never. When you talk to somebody about that, you're never gonna end up um, hearing the end of it. Like if it's about religion, mm-hmm. and I talk about how my God is this and your God is that, yeah, I'm gonna always argue with somebody because it ain't no right or wrong to it. And it might be a right or a wrong to it, but you're never gonna be able to win in those in those categories. You've been doing this twenty years. Twenty years, hold on. Mhm. So you started two thousand eight. Two thousand eight. What is it? Two thousand eight. Two thousand eight. Eighteen. Oh, so thirteen years. Thirteen. Thirteen years. Hold on now. Don't 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 don't. don't. You know, how many years you been doing? God damn it, how many years you been doing this shit? We over here looking crazy. Let me go. You know why I got 20 years from? Because I had my All right, my it's 2024. Husband. Okay. 2008 is when I started. Yes. 2018 is 10 years. Yes. And then plus six. 19, 20, 21, yeah. 22, 23, 24. That's plus yeah, six. 16 years. 16 years. Okay, cool. Hey, hey, you know how we look? Over, I'm over I was just rounding it up. But I got the 20 years because I had my husband calculate how long I was in the restaurant industry before I moved into media so that he was like yeah 20 years i was like oh so then i was like yeah so you've been doing this 20 years <laughs> that was right before our interview started so i can add and i can read anyway i was on the road in school for a little bit for a little bit yeah for a little bit like one semester uh no 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 i was in that joker all throughout elementary school until my dad passed away and then I felt like I just wanted to do everything on my own and kind of just be a badass. Something like that. 
Be di- be oh, be disobedient. Yeah. I'll say that. You know what I gotta give you? I ain't seen no women come out here and try to like shit on you. You know how they be like with every fucking you went looking? celebrity. Did you go looking? Be honest. No, because it normally comes to me. I didn't look. You ain't look. No. Hmm. Why your baby mama out here? The mother of my child. The mother of your child. Yep. I forgot he's a poet. No, uh, no, no. The mother of my child, no dare say it though. The mother of my child. Okay. I mean, she put you out on blast or something? She what? She put you she put you out on blast or something? No. I ain't seen you blast it, what I'm saying is never. like I haven't seen any women like oh, I got this good. nigga ain't shit. You know? I got good discernment. What do you look for in women? How do you know what to What I look for? Yeah, like I look for what I like. What do you like? I like what I like. What do you like? <laughs> that's that's Hey, no, nah, but they're serious though. When, okay. when, when people, everybody different, so okay. people like what they like. Right. I will say this. Oh, Lord. Here it go. Go. Now, you know how you hear black men say, oh, I need my woman to have real hair, this, that, and the third. Yeah. I never seen my mama or my grandma Without we uh, without their real hair, I grew up that way. Okay. So it's, pretty it's much cool. every woman I get with got their natural hair. Yeah, and I don't have no problem with weave at all. Just don't wear it all the time. <laughs> Role play. Listen. <laughs> Listen. No, I'm serious. And, and what I'm saying is, what everybody. Who My I husband do, would lose his shit. What if you had a weave? If I had a weave. Oh, for real? No, because he met me bald head. You know what? I agree with that, too. I've said that to people before. I've said that, you know, yeah. however I met you, that's how I want you to stay. And who are y'all to be determining how the fuck we should stay? Look. Well, I guess because I was just like, when wait, you wait. got them dreads, I got pissed off. You said who are y'all to determine how? We, which we we talking about? Because I'm going to get word on this. We not going to do this today, Tasha. Y'all don't own you, us. No, 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 no. You put in us. You put in us trying to blend in with the rest of them. Yes. No, this is you and him. <laughs> hey, we gotta. Hey, we gotta come up with word with word cutting in 2024. One thing about me, I don't say bitch. I say I, I bitches, women, hoes, sluts, and and, and and that's pretty much it. Okay. And they pretty much it's only women and the rest of them. Women, dusties, thoughts. That's yeah, pretty much it. Okay. And, and bitches. <laughs> you said bitches already. And the reason why I'm saying it is because the reason why we've been arguing for the past five, six years online, on podcasts, is because a lot of these folks, they, they have great points yeah. of use, but they don't know how to use their, their words to get what they want across. Everybody's not a poet like spoken reasons, but though. I don't care, but what I'm, I'm giving y'all the gems like... Like, when I get up there, I don't say, women, y'all got to chill the fuck out. Women got to figure it out. Now, that don't mean that you're not going to be a bitch at one moment and a woman at a second moment. You know, you're a human. You go through your little, you know, right. your, your righteousness and your, and your, you know, your satanic energy at times. Santa- you calling us demons? Everybody go through. I'm a demon as well sometimes. Oh, okay. yeah, I can be very demonic. Go ahead. We all got demons. Ain't nobody perfect around here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fuck with my bread, I become a demon. But yeah, y'all gotta y'all, <laughs> y'all gotta decipher it, bro. Okay. You can't be calling girls women. You can't call women girls. You can't call bitches women. You can't call women bitches. Like and the same and, thing for and, men. And then when you say that, it automatically, you know, it it, it it takes away all the other energy of people that's gonna come and say, well, not all women. Well, not all men. Well, mm-hmm. not all this. You already you already classified yourself. Okay. I don't ever have that problem on, on my platform. I know you don't. I don't ever, because I'm really. No, but I'm talking about women exposing you, like saying, oh, Spoken did this. For as long as you've been in the industry, I haven't heard your name get thrown in any of those. Because I don't mess with nobody. Taking pussy conversations. Because I don't mess with nobody who in the game. Okay. Not one of them can come out and say I mess with them. What, you don't like celebrity women? They all look alike. Not all. How? You get what I'm saying? <laughs> I was trying to put your ass on the spot. I ain't even give me a bit. Listen, 
Okay, so to I, be a- I, I'm, I was joking a little bit. All of them don't look alike, but for real, for real, Most I ain't got do. time for that shit. Most of them do. Why would I want to work with my with my potential coworker? That's true. And then your coworker gonna be spilling your business on her platform. Yeah. It always happens like that. Them YouTube couple relationships, we done seen them all just go downhill. Now, I can sit here forever and talk to you because it's just like a wealth of knowledge. And hopefully you'll come back. Because I know you know, you know how to guide a lot of the youth that's coming up. Mm-hmm. You know, like, let's, let's just take Tommy Sotomayor, for example. That motherfucker's had like 10 platforms. I know. He's, he's been taken down every which way. But you, your original platform is still there. Not a lot of people can say that shit. Yeah, mine was still around when people were getting their stuff snatched away, even way back then before everybody came along. And they said that yours should have been snatched. But, but, I was, but, but, but when, I, when my platform came in, it was more, it, it had rules against it, but for some reason they let me cook. Do you think it was because of your connections? I think it was because of the money. Yeah, the money and all that. I was bringing a lot of money. Okay. They're like, oh yeah, this is too much money. I mean, though. you were very likable too. I mean, you very charismatic. And I, I look mean, like the American million. Negro. I'm saying American yeah. Negro. I mean, obviously. They made it okay for white people to laugh at black people. Um, they feel more comfortable when they see people like me. I'm, and so I guess it is kind of to answer your question a little bit, you know. But they, I don't think it matters about if if they look like me. I think it matters more so like um, just in general who who allows that to happen. Like that whole dress shit, I don't believe in that dress shit like that. I think most of these niggas do that shit because they just want to. Marlon Wayans says art. That nigga full of shit. <laughs> now hold on. <laughs> it is art. Technically. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Technically, but, bro, you'll never hear somebody trying to shit on their win. So when you winning and, and something went down and box office numbers and made historic numbers and stuff and you don't did your thing, it's going to be hard to find somebody who actually had those accomplishments to try to diminish what they've already done. And I said that. He's the wrong person to have this conversation. Exactly. Because he did what he had to do exactly. for his career. His entire family did it. Yes. They all played women. And all gay of men them. And all of that. So, yeah. Um, but I think it's more so, and I said this last night, I said it's more so about representation when you know that there have been direct shots and direct organized campaigns to emasculate black men, to institutionalize black men, to put black men in predicaments to where when our kids are looking at black men, we see them in this way. And it's going on now. Every black woman feels that every black man is gay. Whoa. I can believe that That is that insane shit. to no, me. I can believe that shit. I can definitely believe that shit. <laughs> because, you know, like you said, there's so many people out here, there's so many black men out here that play so many roles. The prominent roles that you see, <laughs> like Tyler Perry's of the world. And people said at the time, oh, or let's just say Jamie Foxx. Um, Wanda. Or Martin Lawrence, um, uh, Shanae, or you see J- you see Will Smith that played that 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 woman character in Wild Wild West. Yeah, and he played the gay character as well too. Yeah. I was saying, especially when Tyler Perry came around. When Tyler Perry came around, I was like, you know what? That's the only thing where it kind of woke up. I think that's when it really woke up black folks, where it was some people like, you know what? This is John funny, but why do he got to be the person that do it? Look here, man. Uh, he's, I don't. I don't judge nobody. Look, I ain't gonna lie. I judge motherfuckers. Hey, I ain't gonna lie. I judge them, but I also know how to. Just because I don't find something funny, that don't mean it ain't funny. Right. I just don't really get into all that, bro. I don't. You know. Mm-mm. But you gotta say it for what it is. Everybody was trying to bang. Oh, is he gay? Is he not gay? He's the biggest Beyonce fan in the world. Come on. Who? Tyler Perry. Hey, Niggas don't, don't like Beyonce unless they think she's beautiful. That's on him. But you ain't singing no Beyonce songs. That's, that's and it's 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 sashay, shit, I got, shit, I got, be, I, shit, I got Beyonce first album uh, when she had the bees around her stomach and shit. That's got, because that, you wanted it. you were sexually. I bought it. But think about it. Beyonce was very and, voluptuous. And I think the number one song I like I like on that album would be like my daddy or something like that. Okay, but you ain't. <laughs> 
Uh, if you like it, you said I put a ring. You ain't doing that. Come on. I, I didn't. But you like Beyonce. You think she's attractive. I didn't say that. So you don't think Beyonce is attractive? I didn't say that. I'm not. You're not going to get me cased up with Jay Z. <laughs> it's the beehive. You got to worry about. It. I didn't say it. Listen. When are you going? Are you going to enter? Because I know you were doing comedy. You were doing comedy tours and stuff like that. You've done tons of tours. And it seems like you just kind of stopped. And now you're just kind of back at home raising your baby. Mm -hmm. You know, doing, you know, doing your podcast and stuff like that. Are you going to get back on the road and do more comedy shows? Yeah, I got um, like maybe three to five shows I'm doing at the end of the year. Okay. Here in Florida? I'm going to do one in Tampa, one in Arkansas, one in Chicago, and the other two I don't really know yet. Somewhere on the Carolina area. Okay. But So you're putting your to tour together. And then I'm going to go on tour next year. Okay. So I'm doing four or five good ones, three to five good ones. Okay. I'm going to put it out, and then I'm going to go on tour. That's I ain't performing a long ass time. That's what I'm talking about, Spoken. Come yeah. on now. You just been out here fishing. No, I got Being like, a real southern nigga. You know what I'm saying? Country ass nigga. I got I got way more than that. I got I got like music and all type of stuff I ain't put out. I got short films I ain't put out. I got stuff like nine years old in my in my hard drive. Yeah. You ever want me to like play a role, I'll do it. As long as it's comedy. I love comedy. Oh, you want to do comedy? I love comedy. All right, I got you. Yes. Okay. That dramatic shit, I'll be like, even though I play those good, but it's just like, I hate memorizing lines. Okay. You want to do dark comedy? You know what yes, dark comedy I is? I love dark. As long as they don't know Tiffany Haddish shit. You said it, not me. Listen. That was way too dark. <laughs> way too motherfucking dark. But listen, Spoken, besides the you going on tour, anything else? I mean, you, you, you're you just like a wealth of knowledge, and I'm going to get you to really, really open up. But I know you do it a lot through your art, through your comedy, through your videos and stuff. You know what I'm saying? And it's rare that you really do interviews. You don't do them like that. So Because you was just like, what you going to hit me with? And I was like, nothing. I just want to I want to sit with the gold. Yeah. I really want to sit with it. I got you. Yeah. What's up? I'm just saying, so that's what we can see coming up. You're going to be on tour. People are going to be able to purchase your tickets. Yeah. You're going you're gonna to come out more and embrace us and and, and step into your 2.0 It'd phase. be so hard for me to answer questions like these, man, because I've never been a person to tell people my moves. Never, like... You're not supposed to, because they automatically so, send so, so negative I, energy yeah. to your... And then you be doubting shit. You be like, my why am straight, I doubting My lip crusty. No. Okay, okay to make sure. I would tell. I'm looking at you. Okay, told okay. me to look at your lips all right, the whole time. All right, all right, cool. People are thinking, my is bad, she attracted? Bad. Is she looking at his lips? He told me hey. to look at his lips. Go ahead. I don't like telling people my next moves. I, I've never done that. So whatever I say, that's dead serious. But I got a lot of stuff. I'm talking to Tubi and all types of my stuff. My man, my man. Come on now. I'm you know, I know a lot of times people when they be outside. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get it though. Let's get it though. <laughs> nah, but that's serious though. Yeah. Uh, like I got stuff. I'm. I, I got run. I just don't like telling people stuff. I got. You. I, I just. I'm a. Just very, see. Yeah, I'm a mysterious person like that. Yeah. I don't see. So whatever I said, that's dead serious. I'm doing like maybe three to five cities. The end of the year. Yeah. I want to. I know this interview is timeless, so they're gonna be like, "Man, 2020. Oh, that was nine years ago, <laughs> bro. Like, God, daddy, bitch. Oh, yeah. We know it's old, nigga, and we still looking at your ass. <laughs> but yeah, we gotta I do that. You. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, that, that's yeah. pretty much it. Okay. Take care of my son. Take care of my family. That's about it. Um, you gonna have more kids? I, I want about nine. The government will love you. No. <laughs> <laughs> More babies for them to fuck with. <laughs> fuck you. If I could have nine, if I could have had nine a long time ago, I would have done it. Okay. You gonna do it now? So if there's any If I don't make if I don't make it past Seventy-two. Okay, I'm done. All right, Robert. What is it, Robert De Niro? He just had a baby. I think James Brown died when he had a newborn. 
Yeah. I think he did. He did. I, he did? I know Robert De Niro just welcomed the baby 80 years old. You know what? People be talking about these old men with these young women and stuff. Look here, man. <laughs> Look here, man. You get the money, we get the we, we get the, we get gratification, bro. It works both ways. I, you're not gonna hate on me when I'm 80 oh, years old, Jesus. and because I you my age, and you you trying to tell me I can't go get me when I know I got the money. Mm -hmm. that ain't right. That disrespectful. Okay. Now when these young girls bring your ass into the grave, then no. <laughs> that's mm -mm. what they gonna do. Mm -mm. If I was 80, I'd probably go by 39. Mm. Winos, thank you for welcoming Spoken Reasons, a wealth of knowledge. Man, you are a true fucking artist. Appreciate I don't it. even like dealing with y'all like that. I, I know. Your artists, they y'all, they piss me the fuck off because I be like, I know you being an artist right now. Can you just be normal? Well, was I normal? You, you somewhat. I'm normal. You you went in and out your art and you came and you was like, oh shit, then I, he spent some game. Then he went right back in your art and then you came and then you spent some game. I'm telling you, I be doing the same shit too. This is all her fault. Jesus. <laughs> appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate you. Let for everybody me on the know show. where they can follow Big Spoke, Spoken Reasons. Hey, Spoken Reasons on all platforms. Whatever you type in that Spoken Reasons, if you see a verified check, whatever the case may be, it's me. Uh, even if it's a fake page, follow them too. You you'll know how to get to me. Yeah, man. That you know funny. people people funny. you know people don't they I don't know. listen. I don't know they don't listen. Thank you. I'm honored. Thank you. I hope you'll come back. All right, I got you. I'm serious. Next time I come back, I'm gonna spit a poem. Can you spit one now? I try to save it. I'm gonna save it for you. Here he go. Let me come back. I got All you. All right, here he go. All right, thank you so so much. All right. All right. Take care. Cheers. Oh, take yes, care. yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm.